G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers on board my weird ship that's flying around one of Keen's official servers. Now I am on the hunt for Cobalt and pretty much whatever else I can find. Basically until I find Cobalt I can't do an awful lot but I will still go around and try and collect any other materials that might be useful later. Now I haven't spotted anything using my ore detector on this first asteroid I've gone to, or cluster of asteroids. I am somewhat tempted to fly around with my drill though because this ship is so heavy that uh, it doesn't really fly all that well. So I'm going to do that even though it's probably partially unwise. That's not in the dark, oh it's lit up anyway. It'll be fine. I totally won't get lost trying to get back there. That has never happened to me around an asteroid. Nope. Never. <laughs> oh. I'm going to die of suffocation. <laughs> or oh, my jetpack's going to run out before I find it again, aren't I? I'm seeing a serious dearth of any signs of an ore here, though. There might not be anything in this asteroid. Like, looking out at the well-lit area, I'm seeing nothing on the surface at all. I think I might have to move on to the next target. Drift my way forward, as I am currently only seven kilometers <laughs> from the start point, so it's not like I've made it far yet. Let's find the ship and let's move on. No point hanging around and hoping. Home is that away, so what we'll do, maybe head to that asteroid that's just off to the side of it. <laughs> I'm kind of curious at this point just how far I'm going to make it before I find Cobalt. And also how far I'm going to make it toward home before I have a jump drive. Alright, <laughs> I can't see from first person. I was about to try and line this up so that I wouldn't head straight for that asteroid in first person. That was a mistake. Now I'm going to be a bit impatient and I'm going to speed up to a moderate, let's say 40 meters a second towards this asteroid over here. I know it's going to cost me energy to accelerate and then break, but I think it's fine. Now, while we're moving, I'm going to find a spot to add a camera. Because if I can add a camera somewhere that's useful, I might be able to scan these asteroids a bit. At least from a distance, get some visual indicator of where things are. I'll get rid of this light here. Pop a camera on top. That should work. There we go. Top mounted camera in place. Let's grab the camera for the hot bar. There it is. And then I can do things like this, and I can zoom in, oops, I need to turn the drills on, and sometimes you'll be able to spot a uh, discoloration to the voxel surface to be able to see whether there's any materials I might want to investigate. The reason I'm interested in doing this is if I see anything that's, you know, a bit off from my current path, and it's got a blue tinge to it, I'm going there, because that means it'll either be magnesium, ice, or cobalt. Fortunately, I'm having zero luck. I have definitely located ores doing this before, by the way. This isn't just <laughs> me blindly hoping a technique will work. I have definitely located stuff. Mainly iron, though. Okay, anything else I should be looking at? Spawn off to the right here. Some of you might have been wondering in the previous video how I ended up spawning so far out in a vanilla start. The reason for that, as I understand it, is that when you spawn in in a multiplayer server setting, you spawn in near another player. Even if you're not in their faction, you spawn in in a rough vicinity of another player. Which means someone else is out this far. Someone else is somewhere around kind of where I am. Although, now getting further and further away. Or possibly even I'm getting closer, I don't know. I think it's within about 10-15Ks. Something around that sort of margin. So, because someone else has put themselves this far out, presumably to hide and keep themselves somewhat safe through obscurity, uh, I was able to spawn out here. <laughs> Which, I'll admit, I kind of like that it's adding some extra goals for me and forcing me to do a completely asteroid start. Okay, I really can't spot anything on these with this camera. <laughs> this is not working. Well, also, I realise now I probably should have done this with a turret, but I don't have the cobalt to make a turret because even just a little Gatling turret requires me to have one... Uh, is it one grid? There are grids in a turret. I don't remember how many. There are grids in a turret. I'm somewhat close to this. I'm going to put my brakes on. I see nothing on the surface of this one either. This is worrisome. 
<laughs> I don't know how long this is going to take. Oh dear. Gotta love RNG. I'll probably find platinum and uranium before I even find any cobalt. So that I'm just <laughs> carrying around hundreds of tons of this stuff with no, with nothing to actually do with it. One down. How many thrusters do I have on this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nuts. Just not enough to build two separate ships. I was thinking it might be nice to have a separable scout ship that I, if I could build it now. If we had 12 thrusters, I would. Link it up with a merge block. Keep merge, disconnect, merge, disconnect each time I get near an asteroid. Oh, oh we got ice. May as well grab some of that. I must have found something in this asteroid. I might just hop out and do a quick scout with my drill. Giant cavern with some silicon. That would be useful if I was going to try and use solar panels, but as it stands, I don't think that's going to be particularly valuable to me. Well, at least I didn't lose my ship, so <laughs> that's something. How is my inventory space doing? Are my drills empty? They are. Good. All right. Crunch. Oof. I overestimated my braking ability there. Ah, oh, no, I probably don't need to do that. I was thinking for a second, should I put some small grid, large hydrogen tanks onto my cargo container system at the back, but it's probably not required. It's tempting to do in order to collect a bunch of ice and and not have it weigh anything, but I think overall it's probably not going to be worthwhile. Since this, on a, since this is on a dedicated server that's up all the time, I am going to be very careful about my fuel supplies and making sure I've always got maximum power when I log off, just to give me the best chance that this thing is still there when I come back to do another recording. Collect a little bit of ice and then we move on. I think that'll do. Yeah, to get out of here without breaking anything. Not seeing any asteroids ahead of me, so I'm just gonna go for it and wait for some to spawn in. Don't know what else to do with myself. I'm trying to think of anything useful to do while I'm just hanging around. I, I mean, I could get my basic assembler to make some components, I guess. It's probably not a bad idea. Make a few hundred or a few thousand steel plate. They don't know what to do. <laughs> I know what I should do. I should make a bit more storage since the drills are currently occupied. Then get the assembler to make a bunch of other stuff. Alright, there's an asteroid ahead. Let's uh, do a slight redirect. I have reverse thrust, toggle on, off on my hop and then if I use my dampeners, I can redirect myself more easily. What do I have on board here that actually has some metal grids in it? Can I cobble together enough stuff? I don't think I can, because the ion thrusters don't have grids in them. I actually don't know that anything I've got has grids in it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a single grid. Oh. I was kind of hoping that maybe there was some small chance I'd be able to cobble together enough things if I went after unknown signals and got lucky with some of them having grids in them. Maybe I'd be able to put together an assembler and then we can start cobbling together enough for a refinery, that sort of thing. Or swapping them back and forth between the two. Let's have a look through the camera, see if I can spot anything on this asteroid. Is it a resounding? No, but I am going to attempt, I think, to travel through that gap in it. Get through there with my auto detector going. It's speeding past a little faster than I meant to. And more ice. Alright, I don't really need to worry about ice. And magnesium. Uh... Yeah, I should try and grab some of that magnesium. I don't really think I've got much use for it. Because by the time I'm trying to shoot, I think I'm done. <laughs> so, there's probably not much value to guns, but... You know what? May as well. Oh, great, it's not even on the surface. It's just annoying. Okay, there we go. I just need to do one little quick drill. I don't need a huge amount of this. Yeah. 50,000. It's plenty. Oh, what's that on the surface there? That could be nickel on this asteroid. I can see it in a couple of spots. There's one right there, with, well, roughly there where the crosshair is. My heavy ship makes it difficult. Uh, and there's another spot just here. So that's something. Nickel, I think, is worth collecting. We'll head over there. And I'm curious. I did just think of a block on here that does have grids in it. It's also a very important block has 50. Now I'm wondering, <laughs> is there any value 
in me making temporary refineries and assemblers to build specific things using the grids from that gyroscope. Uh, how many do I need for a refinery? It's only 20 and the assembler I think is even less or it might be yeah it's even less it's 20 it's 10. So if I'm willing to not be able to turn or if I convert this whole thing into a small grid where the bit that's doing all the moving and the turning is a small grid with tons of small grid gyros because they don't require any sort of uh, metal grid I could get things converted I'm slightly tempted. We'll see. I, I'm i going to give this a bit longer before I give up on the search for cobalt, but at least I know with that one gyroscope I could get a large refinery, a proper assembler, and then we can start building a small grid ship, I guess, that happens to have a refinery and an assembler attached to it because everything else could be small grid I can make the O2H2 gens I can make the engine small grid I can make the battery small grid it's really just the refinery and assembler and even my cryopod plan might actually be better in fact it's definitely going to be better in small grid because you can see the people inside it's, there's a part of me that's really tempted by this big downside of small grid though is PCU limit I have a limit of 20,000 and if you're thinking small grid and every single gyroscope you need for moving something really heavy is already a PCU of 50. Kind of starts to add up. But at least to get things going for a while I could go that way. Uh, if I find everything I need for a jump drive. Oh wait, does a jump drive require cobalt? I don't remember. Uh, what do we got? Nickel. Yes, that was correct. Thought I recognized your yellowy color. I don't need a huge amount of nickel, but it is beneficial to have because mining stone to get... Um, all of the motors and things it's just ugh. I do like to have a little bit of mined nickel just to give that a bit of a boost and not have to worry about it as much I'm going to add an extra few basic refineries to my ship here uh, which way do I want to do this I don't have a port on the bottom uh, maybe this way the reason for that is now that I've got magnesium and nickel these are going to be real busy for a really long time I'll probably build this on the way Head on to the next asteroid while those components are being made. Uh, let's go this way. It's a pity there's nothing slightly disposable that I could use to get uh, some better tools from. Because like if there was something disposable that had metal grids in it, I could totally just break it down, grab those grids, make some better tools. That would be very nice. Wow. Ah. No. What the? What just happened? Uh-oh. Uh oh. I think I've desynced from my ship. Uh. Reconnect. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, this could be bad. See my ship? Oh, I can see my ship. Oh boy. <laughs> Phew. Alright, three refineries. Nice. Oh, uh, I think there's magnesium on this asteroid. I don't think that's cobalt. It's a bit too bright, but I'm going to check it out just to... I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to ignore a blue thing just because I think it's the wrong blue thing. That would be bad. If that's if that's cobalt... Ah, oh, so good. I can start designing my ship properly. I think one of the first things I'd be trying to do with upgrading this ship will be putting some hydrogen thrusters on it. Because being able to move at uh, move a little bit more quickly and stop a little more quickly would be very nice. And with how much ice I've been finding, I'm not too stressed about running out of fuel. But count the chickens before they hatch, though. Need to see if this is, in fact, cobalt. Because I don't think it is. Yep. Ah, oh, it's magnesium. Knew it. Knew the color was wrong for cobalt. Oh. Uh, I really did get my hopes up before though. I was like, oh maybe I'm wrong, maybe this is the maybe this is the right colour. Oh, it is cobalt! What? It's both? Oh man. Roller coaster. <laughs> cool. I have cobalt. Aha! Now things open up. I mean obviously still need a lot more things before I can make a jump drive, but this is very, very important. 
Ah, uh, yay. Proper refinery. With some decent upgrade modules on it. Ah, uh, be so much better. Build some thrusters. Build another gyroscope, because this thing's too heavy for one. Completely rebuild the ship from scratch. <laughs> build a separate mining rig that uses the ions, and then the main rig has the hydrogen thrust. You can see the plans forming. Yes, I can. So how much have I got? Yeah, that'll that'll last me. Alright, refineries. I need some cobalt into the refineries. Now, do I do most of this remodeling while I'm... Yeah, I should... I'll do most of my remodeling while I'm here, I think. The reason being, it's a little bit difficult for me to build on the move. There are some significant latency-related challenges to that, so... Uh, let's first off build a large cargo container. The reason for that is then I can get rid of these off the back, and that gives me more freedom to move around this place properly. Ooh, actually, no, better idea. Let's, ha ha ha, I have a better idea than that. Let's start with a couple of conveyor tubes. These are going to be sacrificial conveyor tubes. I'm going to start my new design with a large cargo container. I don't know that I'm going to need two for the amount of stuff that I'm going to collect. I'll think about it, but I'll get this first one up, and then I'm going to start designing some hydrogen thrusters, hydrogen tank, all that sort of stuff around this, and this design will be built around the idea of hydrogen thrusters and the other design is going to be my mining rig which is going to have these five drills and all of these ion thrusters for it because then I can disconnect, mine some stuff go back, reconnect, fly off I think that'll be a much much better way of working yeah get the large cargo container done and then I'll add an assembler next and then the refinery and stuff, yeah this will work this way I'm just building off a stalk as well it's about 45 minutes of active searching between asteroids to find this, so not too bad, considering how slowly I was traversing the gap between the asteroids. It's not like I was rushing and traveling at 100 meters a second and searching quickly. I was <laughs> taking a somewhat sedate or leisurely pace. Oh, and with my silver on board, I should be able to make myself a medbay. That'll be nice for recharging. Once I decide how I'm going to arrange this new ship that I'm building. I do want it to have a nice interior space, some sort of maybe bridge up front that I can pilot it from. I'm going to be hanging out in this place for a while because jumping, even with even with a jump drive, traveling 246,000 kilometers is going to take a while. Not to mention the jumps that I'll need to do once I get there. Oh, I can make better tools. Oh, and I've got silver. I can make slight, like the, yes. All right, assembler. That is the next thing I need because I want better tools. Oh, building so much with these basic tools. Ay, ay, ay. All right, let's build a temporary assembler because that is definitely the thing I need to do. Uh, all right, let's order parts. Uh, I reckon I might just, I'm just going to slap it on here for now or somewhere down at the front. I'm just going to slap it on in a temporary spot because I haven't decided how I'm going to lay out this new ship and I need to spend some time thinking about it so I want to do it right I want to make something that looks a bit interesting and I know with the kind of PCU limits that's going to be tricky because it's not something I'm used to dealing with don't normally think within those sorts of limits so I'm I'm interested to see what I can manage to come up with all right assembler complete now I need to make a refinery so that I can refine some of that silver Produce myself a better tool. Though I could at least make one of these next tier up welders for now. It's a small step in the right direction. Uh, is this still empty? No. Poop. <laughs> I just realized I shouldn't have made a... I didn't want to make this style of cargo container. I should have gone with the industrial for what I was thinking of doing with my build. Uh, so I may have to make an industrial cargo container. Okay, thinking about a build. Now, I would like to use the industrial hydrogen tanks, and I kind of want to have a pair of them. So, one facing that way, and one facing that way. So they'll be kind of sandwiched together on their big, with their big plate. I'm not sure if I want to try and put a gap in there. Maybe I could put the assembler in there. Probably. We'll have a go. See what I can come up with. See if something good. Industrial hydrogen tank. I'm probably going to end up having to remove this large cargo container, but I'm just going to do this for now. Then I'm thinking assembler in the middle 
because then I can place the upgrade modules around it. Then another tank here, because obviously I want to have a good deal of backup fuel and a good deal of backup power. So anytime I come across ice, I can mine it. Then what I do is grab my upgrade modules. Now for the assembler, I pretty much just want speed. I don't really need to worry about power if I've got all these hydrogen engines running. So I'd go full on speeds so that I can just build stuff really quickly. Something like this. Then using, I was imagining these might work in this spot on each side and could look kind of cool as a core part of the ship design and putting some sort of support superstructure around it and maybe a pair of large hydrogen thrusters one off to each side as my forward thrust Ooh, or a pair of thruster modules on each side with a large hydrogen thruster pointing forward and backwards so I've got good braking too could work I'll get this built first though Empty out that basic assembler and grind it off. I'll get me about half the components I need for the assembler here. Which I can then order from the existing assembler. Okay, assembler constructed. Let's get some speed modules on this one. I'll get rid of the other one. Oh, that's so much nicer. That'll be very good for getting the refinery up and running. I'll probably try and build two refineries, I think. Unless I do similar to here and I go with one refinery with a whole bunch of speed modules. Part of me wants to do it with yield mod- well, ideally I'd like to do it with yield modules eventually, but there is a part of me that kind of wants to do it with power saving modules. Since I am using up a lot more power with my assembler here, if we go to the assembler, it's using 2.8 megawatts when it's running, which is a little bit on the expensive side. Then I gotta think about how I'm going to attach some other components to this. What am I gonna do with the refinery module? My current thought is I'm going to build a little bit of a gap in here. So I'll use some beam blocks on there and there. And I'm debating whether I do one block or two blocks gap. I think I'll go two. Then on the outside of that is going to be my forward reverse thruster module, which will probably have all the other directions on it as well. But the only large ones will be the forward reverse. Oh, actually, I'm thinking PCU. I should probably just make everything big, but... I don't need that much thrust in the other direction, so it should be okay. All right, now thrusters. Can I build thrusters? Yes, I can. Good. Do I want industrial or do I want regular? With hydrogen, I sometimes prefer the regular, but I think in this case, I want the bigger. Oh, I'm going to need some scaffolding there to place this where I want it. I'm thinking maybe something like that. Let's have a look at this from above, see if that's far back enough. Oh, yeah. This could work. Might work. Uh, yeah. Next up, I'm Energy actually thinking low. that these pods on the side might be my cargo pods too. So if I put a large industrial cargo container on here, and then I put another thruster on the front of this, I've then got my forward reverse heavy duty thrust so I can accelerate quickly and brake quickly. The only issue I see with this is that as I've got it arranged at the moment, the large cargo is it's more blocks than the other one. With the assembler being two and it being three, I'm not sure how this that this works all that well. Kind of thinking I should have put the cargo in between the tanks instead of the assembler. So I feel like the industrial large cargo fits on it very nicely. I don't want to have to move all that. I might do it. <laughs> I don't want to have to do it, but I might do it anyway. Get some power back. I was overconfident. I should have laid this out before I started building too much of it. Oops. Ooh. That could work. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Uh, you... Do you have any contents? Yes, you have a tiny bit. All right. Let's put you on stockpile and pull all the fuel out. This should now be empty. Yes. Good. All right, let's have a look at this. If I put a large industrial cargo on here, then we put another tank down, which I've removed from my hotbars. Put some other stuff that I normally put in specific spots. Where are you? There you are. That on there. Then I can get rid of these bits, which were kind of starting to feel a bit janky to me anyway. Then we put 
some reinforced conveyor tubes down. Probably put some, like... It will probably put some of the beam blocks around that anyway, now. But, by putting that there, I can then put another cargo container on this side. I'll match that... I'll match this to the other side once I do it, but... Then we go thrusters on there. Let me see how this looks. Yes. Yes, I like this. I like this. One thing I am going to change is I'm going to try... Uh, where is it? That one. Yes, plastic armor works well here. Kind of hoping it would. That. It's better than the default. Then what I'm thinking I'll do is build diagonal struts to connect these up. They might end up looking a little bit better, kind of fitting, a little bit more fitting. Plus, this design gets rid of this janky thing. It's going to look horrible. So I'll lay out this side, and then we're going to look at where I'm going to put down a refinery, because I think I should put down a refinery before I do too much else. And we can just do simple things like this for the other directional thrusts. We've got all of our thrust directions. This is more braking thrust than I have ever put on a ship. <laughs> I think... Yeah, I don't think I've ever put this much braking thrust on a ship like this before. Hopefully it ends up being useful. Now, refinery. I think that's going to go forward, which means I need to deal with this cargo container. If I end up filling these three large cargo containers, I have collected too much junk. So <laughs> I think they'll be more than enough for my purposes here. All right, now to remove this cargo container, I'm going to need to make some sort of temporary link between these two things. There we go. That should be a safe link. Oh, uh... Huh. May have made a small error here. I didn't build the components for the conveyance <laughs> the network I need here first. Uh, poop. Uh, what I probably want to do... Uh, let's think about this refinery. And then I'll reconnect things. I should have enough bits and pieces around the place to get this to work. Okay. Refinery. There are probably a lot of you who are going, What are you doing, Splitsy? Why are you putting tanks on the outside? And my response to that is, If I get into a gunfight, I'm dead, whether my tanks are on the outside or not. So I may as well go out in style. In other words, blammo. Because <laughs> honestly, I, I'm not someone who can fight. So I, I will definitely just except that uh, losing losing my ship by losing the tanks is a thing that can happen. Ooh. Ooh. I was thinking too two-dimensional here. So I was thinking of building everything kind of on the flat plane, but what if my cockpit and my refinery sit up higher and going a bit forward? Will that end up looking alright? I think it could. Alright, let's try and get this connected up then, because that means this setup here is probably not going to matter too much. I think we're going to go the old school refineries, just because I kind of like their look when they're on their sides, and I don't think I've got the space here, or I don't think I want to build so big that I build the industrial refinery upright, because I think it looks a bit strange sideways. So we'll go the original refineries for this, and I think I probably want them something like around here. Oh, that look. Two refineries there. I'll have space up the front here for a cockpit in front of the refineries. I'll be able to walk through this gap. And then what I can do is at the rear here, I can have some, well, a collection of small grid cryopods. Either up, yeah, either trailing off the back or maybe they'll end up under slung. I'm not sure yet. But I think this should work out pretty well. Cool. All right. Let's figure out the conveyor system first, which is going to have to come from the front of this hydrogen tank. Because with these industrial cargo containers, I've lost <laughs> some of my potential connection points. And I don't think I want to use these bits. I don't want to make them any heavier than they currently are until I start figuring out how I'm going to put extra supports in linking between the three parts. Again, wishing I'd left three spots for this assembler, not two is still in place and like connected yes probably going to have some sort of floor at this height so let's put a flange on there 
then a conveyor junction. Since again, this is going to be a floor. Uh, let's get the reinforced conveyor tubes. Bring these out to the side. I think that's a conveyor port on the refinery there. Yeah, it definitely is. These may get converted into pipes, but I think they're probably going to stay as reinforced. Reinforced tubes. Now, instead of building this one here, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to grab the welders. I'm going to slap a temporary welder in here. It's welding refineries by hand is chump's work. <laughs> I.e. something I've done a lot, but I should probably get better at not doing. Especially welding by hand when I've got a fairly basic welder. How are we going refinery wise? Yeah, still heaps of stuff to do. Oh, how am I going iron wise? Uh, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 30. Oh, okay, quite a bit. Yep. Okay, yep. <laughs> Enough for the moment. <laughs> Enough that I don't really need to worry about it just yet. Good. Let's turn this welder on. Start production of all the bits. Okay. Welder's slowly getting there. Heal. Can't really do much while that's working though. <laughs> it may be saving me from doing lots of trips, but I'm kind of just sitting around waiting for it to work. I'll do a similar thing when I weld up these hydrogen thrusters as well, I think. Because I've got this port on the side of the industrial cargo containers that I can just put it on there. Ooh. Yeah, I may end up putting an extra thruster on that port too. Because I've got four up, four down, but only two left and two right. That'll at least give me three, which will be balanced enough, I think. So one of the key things for me when designing a ship like this, where I want to have parts of it clearly separated from other parts, is that when you're laying out these functional blocks, you really do need to leave quite a lot of space. I may not have left enough here, even with just, even with two blocks in here. I think it'll work, but if I'd built it any closer, it would have all just become one big blob. But to really create that space in between the parts, when you're laying out functional bits, give yourself lots and lots and lots of room. Fortunately, it's not too hard if you're well set up already to maneuver bits and move them out if you build it too close but it's not exactly a f it's not the quickest thing to do almost done hooray i have a refinery and i was correct that is a port so that's fine this conveyor system will work but is that connected in another spot let's just make sure it it is before i grind things off ow what's that welding oh it was welding the <laughs> It's welding that bit of steel plate. Alright, grind out the welder and hook this stuff up. And then once this is hooked up, some of the silver should get refined. And then I can make myself the best tools that I can for now. If I get lucky and find some platinum, I can get better. But at least I can get the two chevron ones. Production tools. Proficient grinder. Proficient hand drill. Proficient welder. Yay! <laughs> oh, this will be so much better. Although, there is a part of me that's a little bit uncertain about having a proficient grinder when I've got this much latency. I a good welder and a good drill, great. Good grinder can be a mixed bag, although working in large grid not usually so much of a problem as it would be if I was working with small. Since I don't have gold, yeah I'm just gonna build speed modules on this, yeah. We'll see if I regret that later. My justification for speed modules is that then at least I'll have everything refined and I'll be carrying around the minimum amount of mass. Hopefully power doesn't become a problem for me. In fact, thinking of that, uh, control panel tanks. Industrial hydrogen tank, stockpile off. Eh, I've still got plenty of fuel. Obviously using my fuel for moving as well as power is going to put some stress on it. But I suppose I was already doing that because I was using the the ion ones, which is, again, just using fuel for power. I can make myself a good little large grid mining vessel. Although, do I want it to be large grid? <sighs> it's a part of me that doesn't. Because I could use these ion thrusters that I've got down here. I could even make myself better tools. I don't think I will, because I don't want to lose the platinum. But I could use these ion thrusters and I could make large small grid ions on a little drill ship. I'm just trying to think which would end up being more, more PCU heavy. Alright, 
We have four speed modules on here. How much power is that using? 2.8 megawatts as well. Let's get through that silver pretty quickly. Let's get this next side done. Oh, it's so nice to have good tools. Okay, so while getting that refinery done, I did start thinking maybe I'm getting a little a little ahead of myself going four speed modules on all of the refineries here. So what I'm gonna do instead is go two speed and two power. I think splitting the modules this way should be helpful. Because I'll have higher productivity refineries operating at lower power. Yeah, they're not maximum productivity, but they are they are much lower power than even a normal one would be, I think. So if we have a look at this now, we've got one power efficiency module on here. We've gone from 2.8 megawatts for effectively five refineries down to 1.12 megawatts for three refineries because it's 300%. So it's... Each refinery, which effectively a speed module adds another refinery, it's just a much more, I think it's a, like, game performance, more efficient way of doing things, which is why they introduced them. Uh, it's effectively just adding another refinery without taking the same cost, performance-wise. But now if we have a look, we're down to 751 kilowatts for three refineries, when one refinery is, I think, 560 kilowatts. So... I think this is the right call. Considering power may become an issue. I don't think it's gonna be, but it may be. I'd rather not make it one <laughs> if I can avoid it. So now we've got two moderately efficient refineries. I've got my fuel tanks on here. Oh, I've got a fuel tank on here. What shall I move next? So why does that? Ah, oh, of course. <laughs> I did this refinery around the wrong way. I should have flipped it over. Look at what I've done. They're not even... It's not even the aesthetically best way of doing it. Ugh. I have to rebuild that whole refinery. <laughs> oh, I'm such an idiot. How did I do that? Do these upgrade modules have attachment points? Yes, they do. Okay. At least I could leave them in situ. Ugh. I'm so annoyed with myself. How did I not realize that until now? Just looking at it going... Huh, this isn't piped up. Something's Inventory. not right here. Okay. Attempt number two with this refinery. Place it the correct way around this time. Flip it over. And there we go. I'm very glad I did not have to replace the productivity modules on there. Uh, I'm just going to weld this by hand. I can't be bothered fiddling with my cargo conveyor network. Ooh. Oh, I almost forgot. I hadn't been thinking about where I was going to put jump drives on this thing. I've got a long way to travel. I definitely want to have more than one jump drive. I have got a 2x3 sort of space in front of these refineries. So I could go with, like, jump drives laid flat and try and build, say, four of them. That'll get me 8,000 kilometers at a jump. Which is still going to be, like, 50 jumps to get there. But to build more than four jump drives is maybe unrealistic. Or I could go jump drive front and back of these. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. The reason I'm thinking about this now is if I'm going to start planning out a cockpit area, I need to plan out where the walking paths are going to go from front to back to make sure I don't end up putting the cockpit in the way of the later jump drive edition. Technically, I'm mobile still. Practically, though, I'm really not. I should probably fix that. I can go and collect myself some more uh, fuel. So what I think would be an idea would be build a welder over here. Order up all of the parts for some hydrogen thrusters. Gonna need at least two of those. At least, let's make say six of those. It'll take a little while to build, but I think getting myself mobile now would be a good idea. Because once I've gotten this bit mobile, I can then start stripping out the ion thrusters from here and moving them up to where this drill head is and trying to make this into a mobile large grid drill machine. And yes, that is a very low tier welder I've got just floating in space here. Because <laughs> I just dumped it because I was like, I want to get rid of you. All right, turn the welder on. 
See what gets made. Yep. Reaches the large thruster. That's good, because those have so many components in them. My thought is to build both of the large Energy thrusters on critical. this side, and I'll build the other side later. I'll have to build these thrusters by hand, because piping up to build them is just annoying. They're not that bad to build, to weld up by hand. I should move this survival kit temporarily up to the other bit of the ship too. And build some batteries up there. Ah, that's probably... That's probably a high priority at this point. So much time to think of stuff that I need to do while this stuff's happening. And that's all that can be built by the welders. Now, let's build the up and down thrust on this side. And I am going to have to build that large cargo container on the other side at some point anyway. Just to get some thrust pointing rightward. This is coming together really quickly. Having all those materials prepared by the time the cobalt showed up was certainly beneficial for a rapid, rapid expansion once the cobalt was refined. There's a not so small part of me that will probably want to replace or add ion thrust to this main ship once I find some platinum. But really I can handle having hydrogen as my primary thrusters for a long while. So my main hope would not be to find platinum or uranium, but to find gold now. Because with gold, I've already got a bit of silver. I can make a jump drive. <laughs> I can start this journey properly. All right, let's get this connection built. One thing I should point out regarding the power situation here, every single one of my batteries is currently on recharge. I am running entirely off these hydrogen engines, which are fully fueled. So while I am aware of my power situation I am not I am not worried about it yet I kind of over prepared <laughs> that first cluster of asteroids which I am very happy I did the point where I will have to worry about power however is the point that I start using a jump drive that will create a power problem oh no Energy oh, I didn't appreciate this this large the large industrial cargo container doesn't actually have any attachment points that I can use <laughs> Except for in the corners. Ugh. I was just thinking I'd place down a line of batteries through here. Okay, I think I have thrust in all directions. Hydrogen thrust in all directions, that is. Got up. Got down. Got right. Got forward. Got left. And we got back. Yeah. Awesome. I should add a gyroscope to this before I get too excited. The welder around, do the other side because I have been manufacturing components for it. Then figure out where this gyro goes. <laughs> do I stick it on the end of the hydrogen tank? Uh, you know what? I'm going to for now. Until I figure out how I'm going to decorate that tank, I'm going to stick it on here. I am very, very happy with the progress so far. Having found cobalt, I've now got my refineries. I've got the start of a ship here with thrust, with gyro even though it's in a really, really vulnerable spot. Uh, we've got... what else? Um, that's kind of it. I really need to get onto power. I will be getting onto the power side of things, and also onto a cockpit next time. This is all that, and plenty more to come. And I will see you then. Also, for those of you wondering, I have been putting my tools in my flight seat and my bottles and things in my flight seat each time I log off, because, yes. <laughs> I am very, very dead each time I come back. <laughs>